my name is Yelly. This is my first book video. If you're seeing this on Patreon, thanks for being a patron. If you're seeing this on YouTube, lol, I got the courage to post it. Hi, we're here. I'm going to be walking you through all of the books that I've read so far in 2021. Um, hope you like it. So the first book that I read in 2021 was Misery by Stephen King. Um, my wife Haley read this book first and they literally like couldn't put it down while they were reading it. I read this during a day where we just like sat on the mattress in the living room all day and like watched trashy TV on Netflix and it was just perfect. Anyways, so this book is about a writer. What's his name? Paul. Our friend Paul is a writer and basically he takes a drive during a really stormy night and he's in the middle of writing his um like newest book which i as somebody who writes love books about writers so this already was like had me gone um and he is gets into a really bad car crash and is saved by saved from the car crash by somebody named annie but once he wakes up he realizes that annie um, isn't what she looks like to begin with. Um, and without spoiling it too much, basically he has to figure out how to get away from Annie and get out of this house because Annie is like a super fan and she is keeping him hostage while he like writes her a novel. I think I ended up giving this like 3.5 stars. It was written very well as most of Stephen King's works are. It really turned me off the way that he described Annie's body as something that was really like grotesque and ugly because she's fat. Um, that was like a trope that I wish he hadn't leaned into. Um, but yeah, that's why I like couldn't give it a five star rating because that like really turned me off of it. But I really, something that I really loved is how Stephen King um, like mirrored the things that were happening in Paul's story that he was writing in the book with the things that were happening in this book just as like a uh, writing device. I thought that was really cool. The second book that I read was an audiobook so I don't have it with me but it is Stamped Racism, Anti-Racism and You by Ibram X. Kendi and Jason Reynolds. I listened to the audiobook and Jason Reynolds voice is so good. He has like the smoothest just like I could hear listen to him speak all day um and the way that he narrated the book was also just excellent I remember this was the book that I would do while I was washing the dishes in the kitchen and I remember I would like do the dishes and it would just go by so quickly because I'd be so like enthralled by what he was saying it's basically um like a history of racist ideas in America it's very good, very accessible, like very easy to follow along and learn from. And I would definitely recommend it to anybody who is a little bit um, like intimidated by more academic works or academic like jargon and language. I gave it a five star. I have been reading these guys. I started rereading the series of unfortunate events series because my wife Haley was rereading them in her discord um and i have actually been collecting these from thrift stores for the past like three years or so so it's taken me a really long time to collect almost the whole series i think i'm missing like 13 and 11 maybe i'm only missing two of them it took me a really long time but anyways um, so for anyone who doesn't know, these books came out when I was in grade school. So super long time, probably like definitely more than 10 years ago, but they're about, um, Klaus, Sunny, and Violet Baudelaire. Uh, their, um, house burns down mysteriously one day and their parents die in the accident and they go to live with their closest relative geographically called Count Olaf and he is very not nice and he's basically trying to get their big fortune that their parents left them and so all of these books are 
essentially Count Olaf following them around to different family members that they get passed along to and trying to get his hands on their fortune somehow. We talked about these books in my children's literature class in school and I remember one of like one of the most memorable things that I learned about them was that they were very like groundbreaking at their time because they were one of the first children's books that trusted kids with difficult subjects almost or like treated kids as adults in their own right or as like people in their own right with agency and like the tone of the narrator was very something that had like never been seen at the time when they came out which was very cool so yes anyways very fun i've read these all before when i was a kid but i also it was so long ago that i don't remember the plot and it's been really fun to reread them and yes i think i usually i typically give these like four stars when I read them. The next read of the year was Radical Belonging by Lindo Bacon. I got sent this copy for my work at She's All Fat because we had Lindo on for a podcast episode which um, I will share the link for. It was a really good episode. Lindo is amazing and I gave this book a five stars basically it is like an exploration of belonging and the thesis behind it is essentially that everybody essentially at our core we just want to find community and we just want to belong and it's like an analysis of the systems and the structures that keep certain people from finding community and from belonging but it's also part memoir because Lindo talks a lot about their own life in this book and what I loved most about it is that it talks a lot about like taking trauma informed perspectives um when thinking about things or approaching different things in your life um and i just really loved it it felt like a warm hug it took me a long time to get through because i was reading it at a time where i just like really needed to hear a lot of the things that were in it so i would read a chapter and then i would be like oh <laughs> like it would just like really hit me and then i would have to like take a week to process what i read yeah, it was just really good. It's a book that I've underlined so many things in and I can just like flip through and read through like, I literally flip to a random page and there's underlinings on it. It's really good. I gave this five stars. Okay, so the next book that I've read was from the library. I'll put the title right here, the title page, cover page. What's it called? The cover. I'll put the cover <laughs> right here. Um, it's called Dark and Deepest Red by Anna Marie McClemore. Um, it was really good. It's based on what is the like Grimm's fairy tale where at the end the evil person like dances themselves to death. <laughs> There's a Grimm's fairy tale where the like evil queen stepmother or person at the end basically is like trapped in shoes and has to dance for the rest of her life and that's the punishment that she gets at the end. So it's like loosely based on that. So there's two storylines. One of them is about a girl. I read this a long time ago so it's a little bit fuzzy but her name is Olivia and her family is like a family of shoemakers and they make these red shoes that a certain time of year give people like courage so that's the time of year where like if you're wearing the red shoes you will confess to the person you love that you're in love with them and then on the flip side there's like a parallel storyline that's in the past where there is a plague where um people dance themselves to death a lot of what that storyline is about is about basically about how like the Romani people are being persecuted and um, like accused of causing this plague even though you know obviously how could they spoiler alert they didn't um, but yes anyways it's really interesting it's really interesting how the two storylines like come together there's romances in each of the storylines which were so well written um, there's like trans representation. It was really good. I gave it five stars. It was a book that took me a really long time to get into, but once I was in it, it was really good. And then the next book I read is Cinderella is Dead by Kaylin Bayron. Um, Cinderella is my favorite Disney princess. 
ever since I was younger. She's been my favorite Disney princess. So I was really excited to read this book and it was not what I expected at all in the best way possible. I gave this book four stars. The only reason I took a star away is because a lot of the dialogue felt very forced to me in terms of like the writing itself but the plot was so good it was so fast paced it was so easy to read and it just truly like it takes the cinderella story and fairy tale and completely like twists it flips it on his head is so good there were so many moments where i audibly gasped because it was like so good and as somebody who had such a uh, like a personal connection to just Cinderella in general, I like thoroughly enjoyed reading it. It was so good. My next read was Cemetery Boys by Aidan Thomas. I'll put the cover up here again. This is not one that I physically own, but this one and Cinderella is Dead actually it was recommended to me by my little sister. And this one was five star. It's another book that took me a while to get into, but now that I'm saying this a lot, I think that it might have just been a me problem where like near the beginning of the year reading was hard. Cemetery Boys is about, it's about a boy um, and he lives in a cemetery and his family is a family of brujas, brujos, and they are like preparing for the day of the dead that's coming up and one night his uncle, goes missing and that's kind of the inciting incident um and he Yadriel is trans and of like undercurrent of the whole book is that he wants to be accepted as a witch um but his like family struggles to do so because they struggle to like accept him as trans so that's like a story that is really sad at some points but then is like really heartwarming at the end it didn't end the way i expected and it was really heartwarming and yeah it was really good the romance in it is really good very queer um it was excellent it was five stars for sure be treated <laughs> you're so cute Haley and I read this while we were on the way to and from our lake vacation um, a few weeks ago. Which, can I say? Yes. You should mention that, like, I just, like, requested this book, had no idea what it's about, and then it's about being at the lake on, or, like, at a lake on vacation. Yeah. And, like, one of, like, we went to a great lake, they're at a great lake. Mm -hmm. Like, just the parallels, not, like, of any of the plot, but just, like, the parallels of the setting was so interesting. To totally, me. yeah. Um... This book is so good. Five stars for sure. I will say this before I get into it. This book is the first adult romance that I've read in a really long time. Um, so reading this and reading some of the steamier parts after getting used to reading like purely YA fiction was so funny and so silly, especially because we were reading it on audiobooks. So they would just like read something steamy and we'd be like, whoop okay <laughs> this book is about augustus and who january this book is about augustus and january and january moves to this like lake beachy cottage house in a sleepy little town which is owned by her father and her father's mistress she moves to this house and her father has passed away and after her father passed away, she found out that her father had this mistress her entire, like, her parents' entire marriage, basically. And it really, like, breaks January's sense of self because so much of herself was tied to this grand marriage that she thought her parents had. So that's kind of, like, where we start off. And then she moves in next door to, I won't say exactly who because it's a really good point in the plot but she moves in next door to a grump and it is rivals to lovers it's a romance so you can you know where it's gonna end up um and part of it is that they make a bet to write each other's genre of literature so they're both writers as i've already said i love books about writers and it kind of just like all descends spirals 
takes place from there. It's really good. The writing was really good. Um, something that I will say that I found really interesting about this book was that the two genres that they kind of talk about is romance um, or like quote unquote women's fiction and just like general literary fiction, like really hard hitting fiction. And I thought that it was really interesting because both of those genres are really talked about in this book and I thought that this book was a really good blend of the two as well. Just like kind of meta narratively. Five stars. Also look at this cover. Gorgeous. Stunning. <laughs> The next book I also read for work, um, so I got the ebooks sent to me, but I'll put the covers up here. There are a couple of books. They are Two Dark Moons and Three Seeking Stars from the Sione Cycle. I'm not saying that right. I'm sorry, Sienna, <laughs> but I don't remember how to say it correctly. But they're by Avi Silver. They are fantasy novels. I was really intimidated to read them because fantasy is really intimidating to me but I thought they were really accessible and really like a really good book to read and get into if you're somebody who has been scared of fantasy but wants to try fantasy out. So essentially they take place in this location where there's like different moon phases and when you're born the moon phase that you're born under basically dictates your gender. It dictates like the personality that you're expected to grow up with, similarly to astrology, um, and kind of like the role that you take up in the community. So I thought that was really interesting. And then another part of it is that if you're born under the Minhal phase of the moon, you and your family get automatically exiled from the community just for being born under that phase. The way that Avi sets up this story is that this character is born under Minhal, but her parents lie and decide to say that she was born three hours later so that they don't have to exile her because like at midnight that night, the new moon phase shifted over. And then essentially it's about her getting lost, there's huge lizards, there's romance, it's uh, it's very much about found family and about queerness and it's just so good. And then the second book, there is a new character introduced who is basically Fire Lord Zuko. So what more, what else could you ask for? I was sold. Both of the books were five stars and it's very much about this character trying to like put together her world again because we live in this world where globalization hasn't happened there's no like cell phones or internet or whatever and also the sky bridge which is like the bridge that's connected these communities together has fallen and has been fallen for several years so it's very much about so Meng, the main character trying to put these pieces of the world back together with the people that she meets along the way and with these huge lizards that she meets along the way and it's very heartwarming it made me tear up multiple times um there is a third book coming out and i cannot wait for it and it was really good next book was fat chance charlie vega by crystal maldonado this book was so heartwarming i gave it a 3.5 but I honestly I think I'll up it to four stars because it was really good um, so this book is about Charlie it's about Charlie Vega and it's basically about her navigating her way throughout high school her father passed away and it happened long enough ago in the book that it isn't heartbreaking to read about but it's still very much like an underlying theme of the book like his absence is there throughout the entire book and it's about her and her best friend and Charlie is fat, so a lot of it is about like her and her fatness, and a lot of it is hard to read because she is just like so hard on herself, and a lot of it is her being like, like putting herself down essentially, and then the people in her life being like, don't do that, why are you doing that? So a lot of it was difficult to read in that sense, but a lot of it was also like very fluffy in the way that high school can be fluffy like a lot of it is her 
fighting with her mom and then them making up the next day or her like navigating boy stuff and a lot of it that happens is just stuff where I'm like oh my gosh I feel for you so hard because I remember being in high school and feeling like everything that happened was the biggest thing in life that was happening and just feeling like the weight of the world was on your shoulders. I loved Charlie. I felt very like protective of her. Uh, very much Dumplin' vibes. If you're into Dumplin', I would very much recommend this book. Okay, next book that I finished this year is Life of the Party by Olivia Gatwood. I started it last year and this book has taken me a really long time to get through because it's essentially a book of poems about true crime and about the victimization of women. Um, and it's specifically about the way that we consume true crime and the like the politics of that the politics of watching all of these women die essentially and calling it entertainment um so needless to say it's very heavy it's very beautifully written olivia is so talented i've loved her work for a really long time but it took me such a long time to read because it was so heavy and so heartbreaking for fans of my favorite murder i think that there's like a little dedication to my favorite murder in here somewhere or in the author's note i gave it four stars it was excellent the last book that i've completely read in 2021 is this bad boy this chonker of a novel the ballad of songbirds and snakes by suzanne collins i love the hunger games when i was in high school i was a hunger games Ho. I was obsessed with the Hunger Games and I loved this book. I really did. I felt really nervous going into it because I saw so many mixed reviews of people not liking it, not being able to get into it fully. I thought it was really good. I gave it a 3.5 because it's split into three different parts and I loved the first two parts but the third part almost seemed unnecessary to me but the third part i think could have been condensed a lot or i don't know i don't want to say too much because i don't want to spoil it but the third part compared to the first two was it it just it felt like it felt like at the after party of the the play where you've done your dress rehearsal you've done your performance closing night has happened and you're at tim hortons in an, like smudgy stage makeup drinking coffee waiting for your mom to come pick you up from tim hortons at 1 a.m that's what part three felt like so it was it was okay like it was good but after closing night it felt a little bit like a downer <laughs> <laughs> I really liked it. I like what Suzanne Collins did with um, the character of Coriolanus because I was really skeptical about reading a book who about somebody who ends up being President Snow, who's this like awful dictator authoritarian who murders children. But it, she wrote it in a really smart way because at no point in the story are you rooting for him to become president or like at no point in the story do you not think that it's going to end with him being an awful human being like you know what you've signed up for you know what's going to happen you're just there for the ride the thing that i loved most about it was seeing how the hunger games develop and become what they eventually are in the trilogy like a key plot point in this book is basically that nobody is watching the Hunger Games. So they're actually trying to change the Hunger Games to make it into something that people will watch and consume. So I thought that was really interesting. Um, I could write a whole, like I might, let me know if that'd be something you're interested in. It would be like a video essay about this trilogy, but I could honestly write countless essays about this novel. It's so interesting. But yeah, that's it lads. Um, so this is the last book I've finished. I will be making another video about books to come. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If I finally got the nerve to post it on YouTube, um, <laughs> thank you so much to my patrons. 
Haley, Helen, and Halima, and Amal. I love you guys. Thank you for your support. If you want to become a patron, I'll put the link down in the description box once again if I post this on YouTube. Leave a comment and tell me what your favorite book of 2020 has been so far. 2021, how time flies. <laughs> Bye.